could be the top 10 reasons to evacuate? Why should you evacuate? Well, I don't want to leave my home. Well, that's one of the reasons people say they always stay behind. Oh, well, I thought it wasn't going to be that bad. Well, that's another reason why a lot of people stay behind, because they just assume that, oh, it's just going to pass us by. It's going to go to the west, the east, the north, the south of us, whatever, and we'll be just fine. I've been riding out storms since I was just a little tot, you know, 80 years ago. I'm not leaving. Well, unfortunately, folks, nowadays, a lot of these different emergency type situations are getting a lot worse all around the world. Now bear with me here and follow me along because we're going to be covering the top 10 reasons to evacuate right now on Survival Preparedness for Beginners. So let's get going folks because we got some stuff to talk about. And these are in no particular order so if you do have a plan in place or anything else you can always move these things around and make like a checklist on should I stay or should I go? And we're not talking about the song. So number one is no water. If you have no water, they turn off your water and everything else, and you do not have a water supply built up in your home to sustain you and your family in a emergency type situation, you should evacuate. Number two, no power. Well, if you have no way to generate power, now having a gas generator is a beautiful thing, folks. But you gotta make sure that you have enough gas because as we can see, throughout any type of emergency type situation that has taken place over the last 20 years. People that do have gas generators and stuff, eventually you do run out of gas. So you need to have something that's a backup to that. And that's where your battery banks and solar power come in because as long as the sun is out, you always got power, folks. So having a backup to the backup is always a great thing. No food is number three. Well, if you don't have food that's going to be able to get you through for two, three, four weeks or whatever it may be, don't be one of these people that are standing on the national television and tell them, I have no food, I have no water, and I, I need to be rescued and everything else. You should have evacuated a long time ago because you were not prepared. Just saying, folks. Number four, no way to cook. If you are on an electric grid and you have an electric stove and you have no other way of cooking in an emergency type situation, you need to evacuate. You cannot produce food and cook it. Well, what are you going to do? Just saying folks, most people have electric stoves. Not everybody has gas and depending on how bad the situation is, they could also turn that off. So having some type of a Coleman stove, propane stove, a butane stove, any of these type of things will definitely get you through an emergency situation. Number five is very important. If you live in an older home or anything else, you need to really consider the damage to your shelter. And I am talking about your home. If it was not built before all the new specs came out for, say, hurricanes and everything else, more than likely, if it is a very strong hurricane, you're going to receive a lot of damage to your home. And you don't want to really be in the house when the roof starts flying off because it's not going to be very fun if the wind's outside or 140, 50 miles an hour. It's going to be like a vacuum and it's going to suck everything out. So you better have something to hold on to. Number six, high winds. We were just talking about that. Flying debris. Now the flying debris can really get you. Not only is the winds blowing everything around, but anything that was blown off or blown out of somebody's yard has now become a projectile coming at you at a hundred and some odd miles an hour and whatever it hits it's going to really do some damage to it can go through plywood through your windows it can do damage to your vehicles anything else and if Lord only knows if you're outside during something like this some type of flying debris hitting you could be a very devastating blow if you get what I'm saying. Number seven, flood prone area. Now, if you live in a flood prone area, you want to evacuate. There's no doubt about it. If you are in a flood zone and your area floods under a normal rainstorm, well, if you're going to get any type of a hurricane or anything like this, you need to get out of Dodge. Not everybody probably has a boat buried in their backyard and make sure to have it anchored down good because it's got to ride out the storm so afterwards you can get it and get out. 
All right, number eight, you're stranded. There's no way to get out. See, once all this does happen, and say, you know, as we have seen in, in the past, in the history, you know, barges and boats and things break free. They hit bridges, they damage bridges. Now you can't get out of town. You have no way of getting out of your area, especially if you live in a flood prone area. What are you gonna do? You're trying to stay in your home and trying to ride out the storm and probably waist deep or deeper water trying to figure out how I'm going to survive. You're going to be stranded. You're not going to have any way to get out of there. Where are we at? Number nine. Any type of major medical reason. If you have any type of a major medical thing that's going on with you or somebody in your family, don't gamble anything. Get out of Dodge. Get to the closest shelter that you can go to. Get, go to family members, get out of harm's way because if something majorly happens and you have a medical episode, you're pretty much screwed because nobody's going to be able to get to you. Number 10. Basically, number 10 is for your family's safety. Don't let your, well, let's just say ego get in the way of evacuating your family to a safe place to ride out the storm. Because remember, all those people that are in your family, your kids and everything else are all dependent on you to keep them safe. So don't put them in harm's way. That's when you want to evacuate. And for a bonus one, had to throw this one in here because, well, it is just the truth. So number 11, the bonus is there's no help. You're on your own, folks. There is nothing that anyone can do while the storm is going on, while everything is raging outside, while the fires are burning all around you, why the hurricane is right on top of you. No one is going to be there to help. You are on your own. And for some, that could be devastating. Now, like I did say, if you are prepped, if you are ready, if you feel that you have all the necessities that you do need to ride out the storm, by all means, if you feel that way, then so be it. But if you can't meet any of these things that are on this list and make sure that you can cover everything that you're going to need, well, there's your reason to evacuate, folks. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. Hope everybody stays safe. Keep prepping. Thrive to survive. Because in the end, sometimes the only person you have to rely on is your own judgment. And your own judgment call can get you. So make sure that you're really paying attention and following the 10 reasons to evacuate. Till next time, catch you all on the flip side.